Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a little bit of painting. So I was going through some of my old um, old stuff and I've just recently stripped and repainted all of my French Indian War uh, minis and my militia, all my 25mm French Indian War stuff. Uh, my militia, my regulars, um, a lot and a lot of natives, tons of Indian troops. So I am ready for Muskets and Tomahawks too. Um, although I did it a year ago <laughs> and it only just got finished. So yeah, I, it wasn't planning for Muskets and Tomahawks, but uh, there we go. Happy coincidence. Um, and I will definitely be covering Muskets and Tomahawks, uh, including the, the stuff they put up on the, on the um, Facebook page already describing how the new system works. So we'll definitely take a look at that in a future video. But today, I uh, I found these two minis just skulking around, and I'd missed them. And these ones I'd missed when I was doing the stripping, but I don't want to strip them all over again because I don't think they really need it. Um, see a little bit of chipping. Yeah, that's just that's just what happens um, when you when you move house twice uh, with miniatures. They they get chipped. Um, this one's perhaps a little bit more chipped than the other but especially here on the edge of the coat but none of this chipping is in any areas that I really care about and I think it's a good example to show techniques and I'm not a painter of any you know I'm not a someone should listen to when it comes to painting but I do have a little technique of bringing these minis here up to the standard of these minis here uh, yes it looks really bright but number one that's sort of the style I go for very bright uh, also, when it's three feet away from you on a gaming table, yeah, and it doesn't. And you can't get the effect. It looks, it looks much, much brighter, uh, much, much darker. Sorry, and you can actually see it in photographs. Um, this is basically just layers with wash. This is layers with wash, and then, and then going back over the the raised areas. I wouldn't call it highlighting so much. Uh, it's a much older way of painting miniatures. Um, so let's have a go. So the first thing I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a whole bunch of colors ready. And for the cloak, for the, uh, the coats, I'm going to go with uh, snot green. Um, purely because that's the color I've gone with the other green. They're not obviously not all green. I uh, deliberately picked out two green minis just to, to show off the coats. And to give myself something to go off. So I've got my wet palette over here. Uh, again, I'm not a painter. Don't expect regular painting stuff, believe me. But I have these minis here to do, and I have this sort of technique. So I thought I'd show you. So all these sort of raised areas here. Just get them while missing the, the recessed areas there. And for the cuffs, I always like to just put an artificial. Uh, even if the miniature doesn't have it, always put a little artificial cuff just to sort of denote that uh, that is where the the sleeve ends like that and just join them at the back there it's much more of a um, do it and see how it looks than it is a science um, if I'm being honest, I don't think I could actually teach anybody this if they wanted to know, but I think it is, uh, well, I have to do it anyway, and this is a, a good way to sort of put stuff out there. So, remember to stay in focus. I have done some Twitch in the past. Um, basically, with Beast of War, not uh, not by myself. Or on tabletop, it's still Beast of War. I'm still calling it Beast of War. But, uh, yes. Doesn't matter that I've got some on the black cartridge box. That's going to get painted over anyway. Um, really don't want to get it in the recesses. Uh, if you do get it in the recesses, a whole bunch of water on a brush and just sort of smash it out. So, yep. Uh, acrylic paint will just come right out with a bit of water. Uh, it'll just come right off. 
uh, provided it's not dry. So you do have to be a bit careful. Now for the back here, just sort of splotch it in there like that. A little bit more on the shoulder. Now the splotching is sort of adds to the effect. Um, it's sort of in that style. So don't worry about it looking too sort of dodgy. This brush is really on its way out. I do have to get another one. But it'll work. So, excuse the ants, it's, um, it's raining quite a lot here, and so, you know, it, ants have just sort of flooded in, <sighs> go away, ants have uh, flooded into every single part of the house because they're getting out of the rain, uh, really did pour down too, so you can already sort of see the difference there. Um, ideally, I wouldn't like it as fluoro green, but remember of course that'll dull down to, um, to that by the time it dries, but uh, ideally it would be a little bit darker, but that's what I have to work with. Um, I bought that green to do my death guard, my 40k stuff, so that's it. Um, so on to the next one. So there we go, as you can see, these two are now done, well their coats are done anyway. So after doing the coats, I'll move on to the breeches, the breeches, 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 the sort of brownish pants that they're wearing. Um, these could be, they could be buckskin, uh, buckskin is commonly this, well, like a deer skin thing. It's uh, commonly associated with, with breeches of this period, or breeches, or pants, I'm going to say pants especially among the Americans, but um, in reality, it's not really very durable. Um, definitely the full hunting suits were used, but um, anyway, I was babbling here, just cut this out. So, uh, Zandri dust. So, using a bit of Zandri dust, um, we are going to differentiate between the brown of the pants and the brown of the of the musket there. Um, so yes, so they're not the same colour. Although the pants are the same colour as the as the hair. But uh, so we're going to do the breeches or the pants.
So we want to leave gaps for the the base layer to show through. Don't want to completely cover it. Um, that would be defeating the purpose. And you can see there's a little bit of string or something there. So as you can see, just the highlighted areas, just the raised areas, and leaving a lot of recessed bits uh, for the hair. Just a dab there, and then just some streaks up the side. Just like that. That's all it is. Okay, moving on, we're just going to do a bit of red. Uh, only the one on the right has actually got some red on him, so it's a quick little tab. Be very careful with this one. So it's literally just pocket. Oh, these are peri miniatures, by the way, for those who don't know. Pocket, pocket. Underside. Underside there. A little bit too much in that pocket, but that's alright, doesn't matter. And then just sort of smear it up there. Like that. Um, do either of these. Huh? So it'll end up looking something like that. As you can see. So that's the only red. But uh, light blue. Which is Temple Guard blue for me. Because again, that's just what I have on hand. Uh, light blue for me is going to be the, uh, the water. This thing here is a water container, some sort of canteen. Uh, I paint all my canteens sort of blue because British Napoleonic canteens are blue, and um, I think blue canteens just look, look good. So to sort of get the uh, the sort of planks there, doesn't that do be nice? And then you know, like this, and of course these are not Napoleonic minis, but. Um, Again, we're going for like a three foot distance thing here. These aren't Napoleonic minis, these are American Revolution and French Indian War type minis. Um, well, they could be used for the Van Dan, the Van Dien, uh, Rebels. But uh, yeah, the, the blue canteen is really appealing to me, I really like it. That's a normal way I do it, it's just a circle with a little circle in the middle. It's uh, dead easy. And again, same thing here with um, the pocket, the lower bit there, there's a little fold there. Not part of the waistcoats. I've got to say though, if you have to go into a fight, I would love to go into a fight like this. If you have to, you know, go into some sort of musket duel, you know, shorts, <laughs> long socks, oh, well, maybe not the long socks. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, these guys did know how to dress. Long coats, waistcoats, you know, hair tied back all nice. If you're gonna die, you might as well die, f you know, fantastically or fabulously. Next up, black. So black is gonna be shoes, cartridge box, and the hat. So I'm gonna do both hats black. Uh, I know this one here is a little brownish, but uh, black, it'll work. As long as your color that you sort of go over it with is um, similar enough. Uh, so these both had a different sort of shade of green. Um, but as long as your your basic color is sort of the similar, uh, sort of the, the similar, sort of the same. So for example, if this had been red, then I couldn't have gone over with a light green because the, the contrast would have been seen too much. Uh, there is a big difference between a black undercoat 
and a sort of bleeding through the recess that we have there. There is a, there is a difference. Um, there's an ant crawling over my miniature too. I just saw that. There it is there. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing. There we go. That's, uh, I hope you didn't get little ant footprints all over it, but um, it's alright. I, I highly doubt anyone's ever going to see ant footprints on any of my miniatures. Um, you don't win awards with uh, this kind of painting, you, you play games with this kind of painting, so... So, we have our miniatures here. This is not the same duplicate. It, uh, it might actually be the same duplicate. No, no, it's slightly different. Of course, the hair is different. Uh, these are, I want to say, Perimeter's Continental Militia or Northern Militia. The Southern Militia, which I have behind me, but I'm not even going to try and turn around. Because I've got headphones on, and then two cords on my lap, plus the headphone cord. So I'll just tear everything off the desk and make a huge mess. But, um, take more effort. The Southern Militia are much more big, puffy, white shirts and that sort of thing. But, um, these guys would fit in just as well. And they do. Most of my, um, American War of Independence wargaming is in the South anyway. So that's why, that's why I like to wargame the American War of Independence. Uh, onto the musket. My favorite, Desert Yellow. And, uh. It's my favorite because I have like 10 tubes of this because like an idiot I was going to do a bunch of terrain and it, it was on special. Okay, there's another tube. I have nine tubes. They can go in the bin. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was doing a whole bunch of terrain and it was like $2 a, a tube and the color was absolutely perfect. So I bought a whole bunch of desert yellow, like 10 tubes worth. It was ridiculously cheap on special somewhere. So, uh, it is sort of my go-to, this color, my sort of like light wood, um, color.
just that little bit on the musket there it just helps to, to pop it out um, especially when you're talking about being on the other side of the table now for the hats uh, I don't like to paint just straight black as you can see that's it's got like the shine taken off it almost and that's I just hit it with white just this extremely mild dry brush of white just to put like almost like a dust layer over it and just take that shine off it as you can see here this one's got white gators whereas the others have um, black gators but that's that's literally no no matter at all so the face and the hands I'm going to do with Kislev flesh Kislev uh, is a G-dub paint named after a G-dub so sort of like um, human tribe up north in the old empire in the old Warhammer fantasy Kislev is cool, lots of bears very Lithuanian Polish feel to, to Kislev um, I remember seeing a beautiful Kislev army in a white dwarf ages ago I'll see if I can find a photo of it, I probably can't because it probably was never digitalized So for comparison, uh, what have I got here? Uh, pulp miniatures, peri miniatures. A little bit shorter. These are sort of on the heroic side. Um, that's a child. Okay, I have Warlord Games here next to it, but it's um, a Hitler Youth. So you can tell that's a child from Warlord. You can see it's much more chunkier, and, and that that's a really bad example. Um, Games Workshop Space Marine. Oh, Chaos Space Marine. The no, monstrous difference there. Although you note know, the faces are very similar sized. Um, and that, yeah, anyway, people have done comparisons of Perry Miniatures online before you can go and find them. So at the final stage, well one of, um, is the white. So with the white, I'm, you'll be very careful with the white because it's very bright.
So there we go. Almost. I say almost. Two finished miniatures. Now, it's been 40 minutes since I started recording. Oh, near enough. So, it's not really a long process to, um, to update your miniatures. Even if they are mildly chipped. Um, it's really not that tricky to, to do it. Um, and I should probably have done that instead of just stripping the living crap out of them. But um, a lot of them are much more chipped than these two. So, the last thing I have to do is the light dry brush of white over the, the hats and the uh, cartridge box. So, get the white out. Do my palm. Uh, fingernails are also great, by the way, to check for um, check for, for the paint. So, see there? Nobody showing up on the thumb, but on the nail. Of course, you can't see it. But, uh, the nail is, is going to tell you whether or not there's heaps of paint on there. Because believe me, the black uh, the black surface will. So just take the shine off it. That's all we're doing is just taking the shine off it. Not the black shiny, but uh, black tends to be just one of those colours that that um it just it's it, it it's not shine. It's um we're trying to give a little bit of of depth or um of of some kind of of three-dimensionality three-dimensionality to it something like that I don't know I'm just talking crap here this is just what I've always done with black uh, some people will paint like greys and uh, oh, sorry they'll paint like a black and highlight it up or they'll paint greys and, and wash it down I just paint black and then ridiculously light um, white dry brush over it and I think that takes the shine off it so there we go two completely finished um, American militiamen from dodgy uh, old school to the new paint scheme to fit in with the rest of the force. So they've got all a uh, new, old, new, old, new. You wouldn't even be able to tell uh, once the paint dries, of course. And uh, I will go through and replace the the little flock on the bases. So thanks very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And uh, in the next one of these, if you guys want another one of these, I'm going to take it from from this. White undercoated pulp miniatures um, Highlander to this, a almost finished pulp miniatures Highlander in the uh, in the kilt of the Camerons, which is uh, my family. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's it's uh, like one member of my family was a distant relation of the of the Camerons, but it still counts. Um, so yes, uh, go from from this to this, and we'll see what uh, we'll see where that goes. Thanks very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.